Hello there, you join me again today for another video regarding Marconi instrument range of radio communication test instruments. Um, today we're demonstrating a Marconi 2955A uh, NATO military communications, uh, battlefield communication, tactical communications radio test setup. Um, this was um, a package which went out into uh, military um, operations um, obviously around the world involving NATO forces and um, this particular test instrument comes in a, a NATO case um, which has got wheels on it and various carry handles on it all different sizes so it can be dragged, pulled, wheeled, lifted um, and it's obviously a very ruggedized to protect the instrument once it's in the case um, the other part to it as well because it's a two part set um, we've got this case here which contains a number of accessories uh, NATO accessories along with the NATO part numbers as well there um, which are contained within this um, unit and obviously when you're dealing with various battlefield communication systems tactical comms um, all kinds of different radio equipment gets used um, I mean some of the systems that I've come across over the years that have been declassified and have found their way into the commercial um, or amateur radio markets things like the Klansman you know the PRC radios um, there are various models throughout the range which um, the United Kingdom's military as well as other NATO forces used and uh, there are some big manufacturers out there that produced a lot of gear and so this instrument and along with all its accessories has to interface to all those different types of radio systems so as I say there was a Klansman, there was a Raycol Cougar um, there were other radio equipment as well manufactured by some of the manufacturers I'm going to talk about very shortly um, but there was Potamagon, um, rebroadcast vehicles, there was Mould um, lots of different military radio systems and uh, not just across the army and the navy naval communication systems as well but there was also unique radio systems that were in use with the RAF and the United States Air Force etc and other NATO forces and there were some very big players in the NATO military uh, field um, there was uh, companies like for example Teledyne Space and Defence um, Harris, who they manufactured a lot of radios uh, for the Ministry of Defence and, uh, and NATO forces. Raytheon, um, again a big player in radar in particular, but not just radar, but telecoms across the board in defence applications. Marconi themselves, who not only manufactured instruments, but they also manufactured radios. You know, the famous one being the Marconi Bauman and... Um, other radios that particularly work on microwave frequencies as well that were personal issue personal walkie-talkie radios for the uh, army guys um, there was obviously uh, Ray Call and uh, and their involvement particularly with the Cougar tactical radio and then there was uh, Philips Philips Telecom and Pi um, some people may remember the Pi Pegasus which was a crystal radio that was used as a military um, radio system and that was quite advanced for its day it had a uh, digital encoder and uh, encryption um, system that went into the crystal radio even though it was a crystal radio set it was quite advanced was a Pi Pegasus and then we've got other modern day companies which have taken over some of the older ones like Cobham, BAE Systems, Rosenberger and, um, and, Tel and Telus uh, Talus or Tells or whatever they like to call themselves these days um, and obviously there were a lot of these companies were all specialists in electronic warfare electronic countermeasures um, you know there were um, Cofton Mesh Networks they were into tactical battlefield communications and combat radio systems and things have evolved a lot in recent times obviously you know we're now entering into uh, software defined radio in particular in military comms which is where it originated SDR anyway and now we're on to big companies like Telefunken, Telefunken uh, Raycoms in Germany 
they manufacture a lot of um, military radio equipment now for NATO forces um, with SDR software defined radio wideband HF up to about you know three gigahertz and uh, which when you're under a lot of pressure out in the in the battlefield you don't be really faffing about with really, your uh, radio gear you know if you're setting stuff up so SDR offers that advantage where it's quite quick to set up now there are no differences with the NATO um, military radio test sets um, which are uh, put in these cases it is a standard 2955A um, no different to the other models of the Marconi instruments range in the 2955A category still the same modes of operation um, that you if you would like to see how these test sets work and a full demonstration of the TXRX duplex and all the other functions please have a look at my other video on the Marconi 2955R um, there were three four models in the series of the 2955 there was a 2955 on its own which had the 30 watt port the 2955A which is this which had the 75 watt port and this button was blanked off here and the R model where it ends with the R which is the other video that I've done if you want to have a look at that this button is a TX monitor it says TX mon and it then allows the um, radio test set to receive off air signals now what sets it apart from the other test instruments as well is that uh, I think this military version has the higher stability crystal oscillator oven within it um, so it gets to frequency quicker when it's switched on from cold and there are a couple of other options which I think are, are in there that uh, some of the MOD uh, Ministry of Defence equipment may have above and beyond a standard radio test set where you've got more precise uh, calibration but uh, in this case um, we've got the NATO part numbers again on the uh, on the front test set radio communications NATO stock numbers but we've got the front cover you know that goes on the front of the test set to protect it that's that's there and we've got the um, battery pack as well this is quite heavy now the battery pack itself has uh, got a, a DC lead coming out of it that then connects to the back of the radio test set because obviously when we're in a battlefield situation or we're uh, setting up tactical communications out in the middle of the desert or whatever or wherever we are in the world uh, there might not be any mains electricity so this is why we've got the battery system this is a strap that straps around the test set so that it has a piggyback on its back a, a battery and it's quite heavy it's not the lightest of things and uh, so that's that and uh, then obviously we've got a number of accessories that are, are in this case as well um, which are for example these cables which interface to some of the accessories RF test cables um, for connecting to various military radios uh, and then in here we have a, um, a case full of all sorts of goodies so just a quick run through things for you uh, if you watch the 2955 hour video that I keep waffling on about this um, accessory is what I showed you in that video as well one of the accessories that can plug into the test set and uh, this is a directional power head 25 to 1000 megahertz but being a military radio um, test kit it also has the other version as well which is the um, 1 to 50 megahertz for HF because obviously a lot of military radios have HF or do HF capability um, such as the you know the Klansman etc and other um, PCR radios as well so that's those two and they obviously just connect into the front of the test set on the accessories part turns it into a basically a bird 43 swr power meter we've got the printer as well we have a printer so we can print off test results and such like and this is uh, um, powered by an accessory plug that plugs into the front of the test set so again no mains power needed and then we have in the pocket at the side 
Um, spare printer rolls. Ministry of Defence think of everything, don't they? You know, last thing I want is running out of printer rolls when you need that. And then uh, we've got some kind of RF attenuator. I think that's like a, a 20 dB or whatever RF attenuator. Made by Green Power. Again, another quality component manufacturer. And uh, there's obviously no cost spared here. And this is obviously an AF uh, attenuator or, or a yeah, 20 dB AF attenuator is that. And uh, there's two of those. And then we've got what looks like to be a big RF power attenuator. I'm not sure who's that made by NADA, is it? Looks like it. NADA. Uh, 20 odd watts uh, RF attenuator. Have a nice piece of uh, equipment. Um, an N type elbow adapter. And then we've got this uh, military radio handset interface box where you can check, I think it's handsets. Um, directly into the front of the test set and then that connects into the accessory port to get its power and then there's a lead obviously connects between here and the test set so you can repair or maintain military radio handsets, microphones that kind of thing around the outside edge we've got more RF test cables as well uh, made of low loss good quality coax a GPIB interface cable and uh, that's that section. Now in the top section, I've got some detail here as to uh, as to what's in the uh, top section. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. And uh, if we open this up, let's have a look. Let's see if I can unclip it. There we go. And then we've even more cables with the look of it. Uh, a lot of these look like the military uh, radio cables as well with the green plugs on the end. Um, so we'll have a look, look at the cables first. Again, more accessory cables for all sorts of different accessories that's in the other section that interface into the Marconi. The look of it, what they are. Um, we've got these look like military radio connectors for the different types of military radios that can connect into the uh, test set because obviously this will have to adapt to a number of different types of military radios and uh, again even more cables down here more military radio connectors RF leads all sorts of uh, different leads with different plugs on the end for connecting to different military radios and obviously there are lots and lots of military radios so I think what they've had to do with the look of this box that's on the left they've had to design an interface box that connects to all the different types of military radio standards and so if we have a look at this get it the right way around um, this is quite an interesting little box we've got an RF amplifier here with 20 dB gain or whatever uh, 1 to 400 megahertz um, looks like we've got uh, AF gen function different types of uh, sim mic, sim tm or whatever it is looks like different type modes uh, we can connect power there uh, these are the AF ports that go to the the 3 on the Marry up with the three, I think, on the on the test instrument there, and then uh, we've got then the military cables that interface to the radio will connect into the here and the handsets, and uh, then we've got an AF voltmeter multiplier, and then we've got a, a load which we can select, um, and then obviously other handsets and things that can connect in here, military radio handsets or tactical radio handsets and things that can all go in there so that's the military interface box nothing on the back yeah so that's a quick rundown really of this uh, military radio it's full of cables and military radio testers just full of cables and testing and adapters and you know they've, they've 
but also Cinnamon is even an N type to BNC adapter. They've not, you know, missed anything really. They've had to really think about what uh, what capabilities they're going to use this in, etc. So um, I'll put a link in the description below for Marconi Instruments factory where these test instruments were made and manufactured. Um, but yeah, this is just a, a little rundown of uh, some of the uh, the military testing capability that you know Marconi went to great extent in manufacturing um, such test instruments you know to uh, cater for NATO communications back in the probably in the Cold War and and since then but uh, yeah I don't know how this test instrument is it's obviously not being used much it's been in its case it's in very good condition and uh, if you would like to know more details about how the Marconi instrument, the various test sets in the Marconi range, I've done lots of demonstration videos. If you look at the Marconi 2955R radio test set uh, video I've done, I go into all the physical features and I do a demonstration of it working with the radio as well and measuring. So thank you very much for watching. and. Uh, Please subscribe if you like the video, or to do some more on various other test instruments. And um, look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you, bye bye.